to the Mango Effect podcast, where every week we talk about the path to living a limitless life and having the freedom to do it your way. No topics are off limits. We get into the practical, the hypothetical, and the downright juicy stuff. I'm Mindy Russell, your host and lifestyle cheerleader, and I'm here today to talk about how to play the game of business and life. So when it comes to business and life, it really is all about playing the game. Each business is just a little bit different, but I feel like there's this element of play to every game, no matter whether you are a high-flying entrepreneur or you are intently climbing the corporate ladder, we are all playing the game. And I actually have an affirmation Every day, I know a lot of us do affirmations and we read things, we read empowering statements. And for me, one of the ones that I chose for this year was play the game. So every day when I am doing my check-ins, so I have a list of tasks that I look at and also affirmations woven in there so I don't forget, one of those tasks that I have to look at and check off every day is play the game. And so what does it mean to play the game. I think this can be different for each of us. And whether it's the game of business, it's life, it's career, every single one of those areas of our lives is a game in some way, shape or form. And so something that really got me thinking this week was about playing the game well. And how do we know if we are playing the game well. And I have a story about that. So this week, as I'm recording this, I actually attended a business event. It was a fantastic event. It was all about traffic and growing your business. And I was with a lot of other digital CEOs and entrepreneurs. And so a lot of the topics inside of that event were focused on things like Instagram, podcasting, TikTok. Yes, I'm going to get on TikTok at some point. Instagram. Uh, I already said Instagram, didn't I? Instagram, Instagram, uh, and YouTube. But the one thing that was not covered, I was not completely shocked, but the one thing that was not covered was LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, if many of you may not know this, but LinkedIn is kind of like my thing. As a professional, as a business owner, my whole business is built around LinkedIn and helping people land their ideal clients and use LinkedIn and build thought leadership and do it all in a non-spammy, icky way and a way that fits their lifestyle and their career. So anyhow, that was not talked about. So the end of this two-day event, the leader of the event is reading through the comments. And somebody said, LinkedIn, you didn't talk about LinkedIn. Are you going to do a follow-up episode or coaching session or workshop with a LinkedIn expert? He paused. He said, hmm, well, you know, I don't actually use LinkedIn for my business, but Mindy does. Talk to Mindy. <laughs> and it was just that one really short statement. And I just, I, I, I had this moment. I'm like looking at the camera thinking, oh my gosh, I'm in his coaching program. And he just, you know, told everyone to come talk to me that I know LinkedIn and I know my stuff, which was incredible. So what you do not know about this interaction with this coach, with my coach, is that I have been a part of this community for just over a year, I think now. And before that, there was also some interaction on the Instagrams and elsewhere. And really, I've been trying to play the game. This coaching program is really powerful, and it also has a lot of my ideal prospects in it. So what I did not want to do in getting into this coaching program, which it's a big mistake that I see a lot of people in my space make is they get really excited about their business or they're always trying to pitch themselves. Like I went to an in-person event with the same coaching program and we had an in-person event in March and it was fantastic. Loved it. I think I did an episode and I talked about it, but a lot of people there were actually going straight up to James Wedmore, it's his name, and we're saying, James, James, I have this great idea. And they were all pitching him like during the breaks and stuff. And it was really funny to watch and observe, but it's not the way I play the game. And I think, you know what? That's such a missed opportunity because I'm, I'm not James. I can't speak for James. But what I would be thinking in that position is like, okay, you got to play the game. Like, let's work this. Let me see what you got. Like participate, show up consistently, do the work and 
then we can talk about this. You know, be in my world for a few years before you start trying to pitch me things that you should be a guest at the next in-person or live event. And so this has been my strategy, and this is how I approach business. So to me, it's a game. So as soon as I joined this program about a year ago, I was really excited. I'm like, okay, I'm going to play this game. This is going to be fun. So the first thing that I did to play the game, every single coaching call that we had, my goal was to get James to say my name one time during that call somewhere in there. Hopefully James isn't listening to this. He's going to hear my entire strategy. Uh, so one time, say my name. So I succeeded. I think there was only one coaching call where he didn't say my name at some point within the coaching session. And, you know, it's a long program. We meet every month sometimes every few weeks. So it was really interesting. So for me, it's always been a game like, okay, let's get him to say my name. And then kind of like progressing that in the in-person event, like I brought my whole family, which nobody did. Nobody brought the whole family. And I kind of played it very uh, coy is probably the wrong word, but kind of in a way where I was being really strategic. I wanted my family to kind of be a part of the program without obviously, you know, come on, kids, let's all take up four spots at the table. We got a husband here. We got two kids. Here. You know, obviously, I'm not going to do that at a business event. But what was appropriate was to kind of introduce my husband to James. And they kind of had a conversation around the van. There's this, we've had a lot of back and forth about the van. We were both uh working on van conversions around the same time. So we had some Instagram back and forth. So that was a perfect natural conversation starter for him to get to talk with my husband, partner, Jason. You know, so it's all of these little things along the way that are leading to this moment for me. And just that one comment, I mean, literally was 15 seconds long. I actually, as corny as this sounds, I actually went back to the replay and recording and actually saved it you know, that 15 seconds and put it in my wins folder. Cause to me, I'm like, okay, cool. Like he believes in what I do and he's willing to say my name in the same sentence as go get information about LinkedIn from Mindy. So it's just one example of playing the game. I'm not saying this to like brag on myself or pat myself on the back, but it's about your game. Like what is your game? Like how are you playing it? Are you in a new game? I think for me, one of the biggest things was really shifting my business. So I went from a very high paid freelancer, that's how I would call myself, to now moving into the past year or so into this more digital CEO role, where it's a completely different game. So yes, I'm still in LinkedIn. Yes, I'm still teaching and training, but it's at a different level. And it's in a very different way than what I was doing before. Uh, what I was doing before I was trying to get one on one clients, you know, is helping them implement and manage their LinkedIn program on the, on the back end. And I still do that for a select number of clients. But that's not the game that I'm playing now. Now I really want to do trainings. I want to speak. I want to, you know, build a platform and build more community. Like it's not just about the one-to-ones and being behind the scenes. I want to connect people with each other because that lights me up. And when I get to see my members, people that go through my trainings, connect with each other and do joint live streams together or say, Mindy, you know, I just connected with so-and-so and we're collaborating on something. That fires me up. That gets me excited. So that's really where my heart is. So that's where I'm shifting my business in that way. But I haven't done it so well. Like it's still a game that I'm learning. This is a completely different space. I thought I would pick up on it really quickly. I think entering the game, like when you start a new game, sometimes you think, ah, oh, it can't be that hard. You know, so-and-so and so-and-so are doing it. You know, it doesn't look that hard on the outset, but really to master the game, you have to put in the time and there are going to be some very not pretty moments when you are playing a new game or when you are shifting or kind of changing the rules a little bit and adjusting how you want to play the game. So think about that as you are starting, like what type of game are you playing now? Where do you want to go? Because there's so much that is involved in playing the game, but I think it comes back to game, the word game and the word play. I think sometimes we take business too seriously or take life too seriously for that matter, where we, we get so involved, like I'm speaking from experience here. I get so involved in the mechanics. For example, setting up a launch. If you have never launched a digital product before, you think it looks really easy. You're like, yeah, yeah, you just send out a few emails. You have this course somewhere and boom, you just have, you know, five, six figures a month 
coming in on autopilot. Oh, what they don't tell you about playing that game is it takes a heck ton of work to set up a system to make sure everything actually works. You are literally building a business machine. And to build a machine, it takes a lot of time. It's not like just, you know, kind of leaving your job and going and freelancing or consulting where you're doing it on a per project basis and getting paid quite well. It's like building a machine and then you got to feed it a lot of leads for it to actually work and generate that amount of money and also a lot of content that has to support it and make you popular and all this wonderful stuff to actually make sure that that machine works. Then there's the ad side of things. So I, there's a lot that goes into it. So if you have looked down on people that launch digital products or think it looks really easy, it is not easy. I will just tell you this. So in making my shift, I thought it was would be very, very easy. I'm like, oh, I'm super organized. All I need to do is follow this short checklist and everything will work and I'll have my first five, six figure launch within a year. <laughs> That's funny, right? Uh, so I think understanding that it's going to take time to play the game and giving yourself some credit for playing and not playing so well. Because it does take time, but it is a game. It's supposed to be fun. And this is something that I am learning from a few of my business mentors is that business should be fun. If it's not fun, You've got to make it fun in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you want to play a different game. If your business is like, oh, Mindy, if I have to do this for one more day, okay, are you just going through one of those meltdowns like we talked about in the last episode? Or is this a real moment and a turning point for you where you need to say, huh, you know, I really hate what I'm doing. I really do not like this game. For me, like trying to be in corporate, I actually tried very hard to be in corporate for a very short period of time. Okay. Obviously, it didn't last that long. I'm an entrepreneur through and through. But I tried to play that game, and I was pretty good at playing the game. You know, there's the whole political thing. You got to touch bases with the right people. You got to send emails at the right time. You raise your hand for specific projects. You know, stroke the egos of the right people. And you start working your way up that ladder. And if you like that game, play that game. There's nothing wrong with that. I think so many people like try to make entrepreneurship like, ooh, entrepreneurship is like super special, you know, and put down the corporate game. But they're just two different games. And you got to figure out which one you actually like better. If you're on the fence, maybe you're an entrepreneur and you want to go back into corporate, you know, do a little bit of a test run. You might not be able to do it fully, but maybe keep some of your clients and, you know, take a full time job and do some stuff on the side. You can always go back to that entrepreneurial gig if it doesn't work out or you don't like playing that game and vice versa. So if you are in corporate, maybe start moonlighting on the side and doing some side projects and see if you actually like that flow and enjoy that. So figure out what game you want to play because you get to choose. I think that's the key is sometimes we forget that we get to choose the game. Like, we don't have to play chess if we want to play checkers. You know, so think about that. Like, what game do you want to play? Just because somebody else is playing a game that looks successful doesn't mean that it is your game to play. You get to pick which game you want to play. And you get to change that game at any point in time. I think we forget about that, too. We get stuck like we're like, well, I picked this road, so I guess I got to stick with it. Yeah, you do have to stick with it for a while to make sure that it works. But hopefully you did a little bit of a test run testing out that game to see if you'd actually like it and want to master it and want to learn that game. Because I feel like when it comes to playing games, you have to experiment. You have to play a lot of different games to figure out which one you really want to go all in on. The key, you have to play. You can't just watch from the sidelines. You can't just look at a game and go, yeah, that's great. You know, for in, in my case, I'm a pro, comp- pro surfing competition spectator. Like, I watch all the surf heats. So if you want to know what's going on in the WSL, which is the World Surf League, just ask me because I know. I follow everybody's stories. I, I never like sports, but I love pro surfing and it is so fascinating for me but you know what I cannot surf like any of those people and I don't think I ever will be so I'm not playing their game for me surfing is a totally different game than what I'm actually watching on the screen so I cannot consider myself a pro surfer I am an avid surfer but not a pro surfer and I am not willing to play that game I watch what they go through. You know, obviously, I'm I'm past the age where being a pro surfer is actually an option. Uh, But as a caveat to that, even if I was young enough, it just the risk is too high for me. It's a game that I would not want to play 
because of the level of injury that happens, uh, the stress that they're under, the traveling. You know, so it's not a game I want to play, but I love watching from the sidelines. I love being a spectator. So some games you may really enjoy, but you actually don't want to play them. So you need to be able to distinguish when you are a spectator and when you are playing the game or want to get into the game. So think about that. Like, what does that mean for you? Is there something that you're looking at? You're like, huh? No, that actually looks like a really cool thing. Like maybe I want to relocate or I want to move or, you know, I want to do this really cool vacation or I want to switch careers. Okay, do you really want to do that? Or does it just like the whole grass is on the grass is greener on the other side? You know, that whole metaphor. Is that what's going on? So really do some soul searching. Some people do better with journaling. Others, it's talking it out with a friend to figure out if you want to get into the game or if you just want to watch the game. And I feel like too many wannabe entrepreneurs say they want to create a lifestyle that they dream about, but they don't know how to play their game. Like, I'll give you an example of a real life person that I know. (laughs) So this real life human is a wonderful human and lives on the island, but he He quit his job, so he was a very successful contractor, and he uh, quit that role to actually start doing much more in the real estate investment side of things. And it's been really interesting to see his journey because he's in the very early stages of being a digital entrepreneur, of actually like standing in front of a computer all day and trying to, you know, be successful and be productive and get that same gratification after being in the trades for, you know, probably 20, 25, 30 years, thereabouts. And it's a completely different game. And so working with him and just having conversations because our friends, our families hang out together and just having conversations about you know, the different struggles that he's having and really trying to figure out his way and what it is like to work as an entrepreneur, a digital entrepreneur, because he still was an entrepreneur before. But in this sense, he's in front of a computer screen. He's dealing with numbers. He's dealing with screens, printing out things, you know, dealing with real estate, which is very different than being in the trades. And so I feel like it's been really interesting to watch him and share ideas, you know, for how to make that transition, because on the outside, it seemed very easy. You know, when he was initially making that decision, I remember having conversations about, okay, yeah, it took me a few months, I'll get up and running. And now it's like, you know, when does the money start coming? <laughs> you know, like, how, how do you make that money actually come in, Mindy? You're like, yeah, I know, it's not as easy as it looks, right? You think, oh, as soon as I quit, you know, there's just going to be money falling out of the sky. Uh, but it is a little more challenging. And so really getting through those early stages And watching him go through those early stages, it's helping me to also, I think, think about the the game and the game I want to play and the game that he wants to play and all of the steps that it takes to get there. Because I'm also struggling in my own way, kind of shifting from being that freelancer to a digital CEO. And so it's like we're all kind of going through this evolution and this process. Even if we feel like we've mastered the game, I think it helps us to have beginner's mind. And think about, huh, you know, what game am I playing? How well am I playing it? Do I still want to keep playing this game? And is there a change needed or do I want to play with the different rules? You know, because we can change it. And surfing is a really good metaphor for this. I know I mentioned pro surfing, but being a surfer, so that's different than watching pro surfing. There are different types of surfing. So most people may not know this or some people may know. When it comes to surfing, you have people that are long boarders, you have people that are short boarders, you have people that ride all the boards, you have people that are competitive, the people trying to qualify for the, you know, the pro series. You have people that are just recreational. You have people on boogie boards. You have people that body surf. I mean, there's a ton of different types of surfing. And so, yeah, there are a lot of different surfing games that you could play, but you really have to learn the basics of surfing first. So obviously you have to know how to paddle out, how to catch a wave, you know, how to paddle into the wave, how to position yourself, where the peak is, what do waves look like when they're coming towards you, how to stand up in the whitewater, like all of the basics of surfing first. And then you can kind of start discovering which type of surfing or style appeals to you by testing out various forms. So like testing out different boards, testing out different breaks. Are you a goofy foot? Are you a natural foot? And then once you figure out, okay, you know, kind of like these types of boards, I kind of like these types of waves. Then you play that game. You know, if you like surfing, like, you know, pipeline type of waves, which are 
very fast barrels. So basically, the wave goes over your head and you're like riding in a tunnel. I do not surf those waves, by the way. But if you like those types of waves, you're probably going to need a short board and you're going to need a lot of surfing skills and a lot of time in the water. Now, on the other hand, if you actually like a long board and you like kind of mushy waves and maybe a little bit of energy, but you like getting into them early and you want a nice, smooth ride, you may really enjoy you know, a log or a longboard. You know, it's, it, it all depends on your style of surfing, but you've got to test things out to figure out what you like. So, for example, Jason, my partner, he rides longer performance boards so they can turn really well, and he loves to play with his fins. So he's, like, all about the fins. If you have questions about surf fins, he's all over it. I'm a bit more of a twinny girl, so I have a fish. It's a twin fin. It is so much fun. I'm just like completely in love with the board and I cannot stand a long board. So I don't like any board that is underneath my feet when I'm paddling. So basically you're on your stomach, you're on a board. So if the board is longer and my feet are, you know, sitting on the board with my toes on top of the board, I don't like it. I like my feet dangling in the water, especially when I'm taking off. So, you know, you have to kind of figure out like we both like surfing, but we play different games. You know, and maybe that maybe that will change at some point. Maybe I'll decide, you know, why not pull out a longboard? And I might like I might like it at some point. But it's really figuring out what you like, what game you want to play, and going with it. So think about that today. Which game are you playing? Do you like playing that game? And how can you improve the way you play that game? I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts on the whole concept of playing the game and what it means to you. Because I feel like there's so much that we can explore and we didn't even scratch the surface with this topic. We'll probably come back to it at some point. So DM me on Instagram to share your take on the how to play the game and what game are you playing? I like to know. It can be life related. It can be business related. But just shoot me a message. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and say, I'm playing the fill in the blank game. And I would love to know. I'm also on TikTok. I know I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I promise. (laughs) You know, my daughter is uh, pushing me into getting on TikTok. So Mango Effect podcast on TikTok and you can find me there. So let's encourage and inspire each other this week. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to the Mango Effect podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. If you love it, go ahead and write a five-star review for the show. I know that's a big ask, but I do read them and I appreciate them. I have seen a few come in over the past couple of weeks, so thank you to those of you who are writing those reviews. We are a new show, so any reviews and subscribes we get will definitely help us as we grow. All right, I will talk with you in the next episode. Have a beautiful rest of your day.